So how do I know what to stream? Intellect can totally move you now. So what am I streaming? Stream options. Set up. Hi, April. I'm in the um, living room. So if you're in the kitchen, you'll need to come through to the living room. OK. I'm playing with some software at the moment, uh, as is my want. And um, at the moment, I'm not sure what I'm meant to be doing. So you have to bear with me. But join me in the living room where the picture is. OK. And then we can talk about what you wrote in the forum, which is great. I want to know where to get my screen capture from. Video output is currently set. Hotkeys, start streaming, stop streaming, blah, blah. Ah, there you are. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was, I don't see, I was in the kitchen or uh, somewhere else, I don't know. There was um, a washing machine there. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, is that the kitchen? Yes, that was ow, the ow, ow, That wrong. was the rebuilt kitchen since you killed it. <laughs> <laughs> you killed my kitchen. Now, um, I've got a bit of a situation here. I'm just needing to do... Ah, sources. Plus source. Um, display ca game capture, maybe. Or display capture. Let's have a look. Display capture. Add existing. Nope. To create new. Okay. Aha, there we go. Okay. So, with a bit of luck, we'll be able to screen, stream this. Um, so, I'm going to start recording as well. I don't know what I'm doing here, by the way. Um, we'll see. Anyway. Hello Traum, nice to see you. Shiny's coming too. Excellent. The gang's all here. Hi all. Hi Lynn. Hi. Now don't let me forget that we're going to do a session uh on after after the um TGF. Yeah, after TGIF. Uh because TGIF. you know what I'm like. <laughs> so it's I'm supposed Ah yes, we're streaming. Yay! Excellent. Hang on. Now, can I do a little air pump, I wonder? <laughs> okay. So, now, just so you know, we are streaming this session. Uh, so, it's going to be a little bit of a recap of what we did before. Um, because, of course, streaming this, nobody's actually seen the session so far. Um, I'm going to recap what we did last week. And I've rebuilt parts of the kitchen. But it's not going to look exactly the same as the picture here. OK, so with no further ado, um, let's have a look at the picture. Hi, Marco. Oh, white dot. Yeah, white dot. Good. White dot shiny. Shiny, can you hear us? Oh, no white dot. Yes, white dot. Shiny. Hello. To look for. Hello. Ha ah, good, 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 good. <laughs> so I'm going to 
get this going and I want you to be really happy. Woohoo! We're streaming. <laughs> Hang on. Let me show you. Let me get to see if I can get back. Woohoo! We're streaming. <laughs> Has anybody not got that animation? I can't see anything. I am fixed on the picture. I I zoomed it to uh, close to me. <laughs> I ah. don't see anything else. <laughs> okay, let me share with you. Hang on a second. Um I'll share that with you. Uh, let's see. It should be shareable, I think. So near me. This is your celebration. When you're next at a gig in World and you want to celebrate the band because they're really good, this is the sort of thing you do. Okay. It's called fist pump. It's um, basically you kind of get your die. Yeah, great. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Just make sure you're not too close to somebody else. You might uh, elbow them in the eye or something like that. <laughs> Woo! <-hoo! laughs> Go DJ! Yay! We're streaming! So Marco, you came just as I warned everybody that we're streaming this session. Okay, when you see the stream, Marco, you will see that you're grey. That isn't your problem. That's my problem. I don't know why. Everybody else is fully dressed and shiny. I'm afraid you will see your red nose. <laughs> I can't do anything about that. I wish I could detach it from you, but I can't. It's on your avatar. And I don't know how to get it off your avatar. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> luckily everybody's fully dressed or grey, so it's all good. Although I can see one shoe and flares on Marco, which is odd. So, Marco, can you hear us? Yes, yes. Yay, excellent. Now, who's observant and who saw the post that um, April put in last week's session. Yeah. Ah, and somebody else has been busy as well. I'm not that observant, Shiny. <laughs> so Shiny, I presume you saw April's um, text, yeah? And you added your own, excellent. Okay, so you've both been very busy. April, I do want to know, what were you doing online at 26 minutes past one this morning? Because I know you share the same time zone as me. <laughs> uh, we've just finished the session with Natasha at, uh, what time was it? Wow. Uh, about one o'clock. Okay. So that's why. And you were so wide awake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and I've just uh, went I, I've just gone to bed at uh, three o'clock and uh, this morning I missed the RMR. <laughs> oh, RMR. No. RMR. I saw, so I think I heard, I heard, I heard the alarm, the, the alarm clock and I just uh, closed it without, without you just being put it, well, You shut it or you snoozed it because I tend to snooze it. No. But I tend to snooze no, it about I don't 10 have times. <laughs> <laughs> You just caught it, Marco. Okay. Well, that's. Oh no! Don't don't go into the attic yet. No, we're not doing the attic yet. We're sticking to the kitchen this week. Now, the reason we're going to do a little bit of a revamp from last week. I apologise in advance, but because I'm streaming and we we did this last week without the streaming because it wouldn't work. Um, I want us to just revamp the text, but we can do that using Shiny and April's um, text. So. Um, I love your saying, first of all, April, um, accidents happen in a small corner. <laughs> what on earth does that mean? <laughs> I mean, we have the saying accidents happen, you know, um, but I've never heard the small corner bit. What, what's, what's the idea of the small corner? Yeah, so uh, in the place where you didn't, you you don't uh, expect actually in small corner, you don't expect that uh, an accident will happen in such a, a small corner, but it happens. Okay, so just um, ac so basically, accidents happen in unexpected places, even the small places where you might feel safe. Is that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Like that. <laughs> okay, so now you, you then said um, we need to do every little caution. Uh, you wouldn't really do every little caution, 
Okay. A caution as a noun is more something you might receive from the police. <laughs> Um, he was cautioned by the police. He, he received a caution from the police. So what you want to say, what I think you wanted to say is we need to be cautious. OK. Oh, maybe uh, yeah, we need to carry is... out little checks or. Little check, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, but, um... yeah we said we said that uh, how how can you put uh, the word safe there Lynn? because it is more about safety every little thing to to make something safe what is that in uh, one word <laughs> i love it <laughs> one word we have that one word yeah uh, we need to secure things we need to make things secure So, but I in in the in the sentence you've um, written, I would say we need to be cautious to make this kitchen as safe as possible, right? Okay. And then your first question was this: um, if you could say it, I've put it in local chat. If you could actually say it first of all, but I want you to say it <laughs> as if you are asking this group. Uh, first of all, who spilled the milk on the ground? Very good, yeah. Who did that? Who spilled the milk? <laughs> Go on, own up. Who did it? No? Maybe it was the cat. I think the cat was trying to steal the milk and he pushed or nudged or um, knocked the milk jug over. That's why he's looking so worried in the picture. <laughs> okay, so that, that was perfect. Who spilt the milk on the ground? Now, perfect, but not 100% super. Why? What's the difference between the picture and what April wrote? Anybody? Okay, maybe if you follow me outside, if you can, okay, just walk through the doors, crash, bang, wallop. Okay, let's wait a moment for everybody. Okay, so, oh. On the carpet, on the rug. Yeah, not not on the, okay, you got it, Marco. You thought, what's she doing? What's she doing? Why am I standing out here? Where am I standing, Marco? On the ground. Yeah, now I'm standing on the ground. Do you get the difference, April? Uh, I have to say on the floor. Actually. On the floor would be better. Now, you could say on the carpet, on the rug, or whatever floor covering there is. But on the floor is when you're inside. Okay, you're not, hopefully, uh, on the ground when you're inside your house. I mean, there are some houses in the world where you are. But um, in this little cosy cottage, it's on the floor. Okay. So who spilt? Now, you couldn't say on the rug or the carpet, Marco, because it looks like it's a linoleum floor to me. So you'd just say who spilt the milk on the floor. Now, you said please clean it. Mm, you want us to clean the milk? Uh, yes, that puddle of milk. Mm, you, you, so the milk is dirty and you want the milk to be clean. Oh, to clean the floor then. Yeah. <laughs> to better? clean the floor. Uh, sorry, Tram? Um, I think to weep is better in here, in this case. To weep? Weep. Not to wipe, sweat. you mean. To, to wipe. <laughs> to wipe, yes. To wipe, yes. Sorry, wipe. And again, wipe what? Wipe the milk? You need a little preposition. Please clean it up. Okay. Uh, sponge it away. Please mop it up. Yeah. So clean the floor. If you'd said, please clean the floor, that would be fine. But this is a spill. So we mop it up. Yeah. Please mop it up. 
I always thought when we uh, when I use uh, the verb mop, um, it, it, then I have a picture of dust in my head. Oh no, no, a is mop a... is a mop is for liquid. A mop is what we put um, when I mop the kitchen floor. I'm washing it with um, a mop, literally a mop, which is it's like a a brush but it has bits of in fact i use a vileda mop you can look it up on google um it's kind of got strands of cloth on it and a bucket yeah. water and i'm and you can also mop up a spill um oh, so yeah. mopping is liquid sweeping is more dust okay it's to wipe Lynn. to wipe, uh, wipe. Up. i i wipe, wipe can up. be both wipe can be liquid or polishing okay uh -huh. But when um, April split the milk or somebody else, then I also could say, please wipe it up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. And if you really okay. want me to confuse you, you want to make the, the kitchen surfaces clean, you wipe them down. <laughs> Oh, I know. Uh -huh. So the prepositions. Down to the Down to the <laughs> yeah, they're the things. That's why I say you have to get a feeling for them. Prepositions are a nightmare, I know, but they are what they are. So we just have to accept that they're crazy and mad and we have to get used to it. OK, so. Um, now you've put a swab. Oh, yes. Hang on. Please clean it up. Um, now, you then said you don't want that one of us breaks a leg if you slip on this puddle of milk. Well, if you slip on it, you've broken your leg. It's your own fault. You spilled it in the first place. So um, I wouldn't say you don't want that one of us breaks a leg. You don't want one of us to break a leg and not if you slip on this puddle of milk what could you say instead of if you slip on this puddle of milk okay if you slip on the puddle of milk you break your leg if we slip on the puddle of milk one of us would break our leg does that make more sense april uh, yes, you don't want one of us to break a leg if we slip. Ah, okay. But you, uh, I mean, it is not that we uh, that uh, more people. Is that uh, yeah? Just only one. If one of us uh, stay there, you can slip and you can fall. And you can sleep, uh, you can break a leg. So how could, how, do I, how can I say that? Please? You would just say one of us could break our leg if we slip on it. Yeah. But one, one of us will break our leg or break a leg. Not you. If you slip on it, you will break your leg. If I slip on it, I will break my leg. I might break my leg. So if you slip on it you might break a leg if i slip on it we i might break my leg if one of us slips on it we might break a leg okay but why is only different uh, in the first uh, uh, singular? Uh, if I slip on it, I might break my leg. And for, yeah, I'd, for, if I was talking uh, about myself, I wouldn't say a leg. I mean, how many legs have I got? <laughs> okay, so if I slip on it, I might break my leg. You could say if you slip on it, you might break your leg. Yeah, if one of us slips on it, um, they might break a leg. Yeah, so, different, remember, there's a multitude of ways you can actually um, form a sentence. So, a leg, your leg, my leg, it just depends on how much of an emphasis you want to make uh, on the fact you've broken a leg. <laughs> I wish I'd got my leg plaster in uh, OpenSim April. <laughs> 
I'd hand yeah. it to you and say, now look what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, the last one, you, you put swab it with water. Hmm. Now to swab, it's not wrong, but it's either medical or some kind of sailor. Okay, to swab. Um, it's a bit, it's a bit specialist, really. Okay, so mop it um, or wipe it down with water or uh, clean it with water, wash it with water, I would say, rather than swab. Yeah, wash it with water. If you don't want ants and other creatures to come here. Okay. Not come here too. You've got to have the um the handle two on it okay so april with those corrections in mind do you want to read that sentence that paragraph uh, one second, minute, okay i'll, um, I'll type it all up see... to you now. hang on i'll type it all up for okay. you because otherwise it's a bit bitty isn't it uh, we have a saying which literally translated says Accidents happen in a small corner, so we need to be cautious to make this kitchen as safe as possible, right? First of all, who spilled the milk on the floor? Please clean it up. You don't want one of us to break a leg if we sleep on this puddle of milk, do you? Uh, and then Sorry, it should say wipe wash it, it. Yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wipe it down with water if you don't want ants and other creatures come here. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Well done. Any questions? Okay, well, swipsy swapsy around. That's my favorite saying at the moment. It doesn't actually exist. I've made it up. Swipsy swapsy. Um, <laughs> so, sw shiny, you've also. Oh, um, Traum, don't forget to mute your mic. You're, you're thumping Sorry. away on your keyboard. Okay. Um, so, Shiny, here's part of what you wrote. Okay. Now, you've put turn off any source of heat or switch before leaving. What do you mean by switch? Uh, um, for example, uh, the uh, iron or the kettle. Okay. Um, if you have a look at the kettle in the picture. Okay. We've got um, a switch on the kettle, but that's a switch. Okay. Now, to switch something would mean to swap it. Um, I'll switch the kettle round with the jug. So I'll put the kettle where the jug is and the jug where the kettle is. That's to switch. Again, prepositions. So you've got to switch on and to switch off. Okay. So if you switch the kettle on, you're turning it on. If you switch the kettle off, you're turning it off. Is that what you meant to switch on, to switch off? Uh, yes. Aha. Okay. Then really you've already said it with turn off. Okay. So what you're saying is turn off any source of heat or switch, maybe switch appliances off or maybe unplug appliances, but switch appliances off before leaving. Then you put, I saw water boiling over in the pan on the cooker. That's very good. But then you said, iron left switched. Iron left switched what? I just want to include all every uh, possible uh, electric, electric uh, product. Electrical appliance. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Iron left switched would mean the iron had been switched with something else and then left there. So again, you need the preposition. Which did you want? On or off? Off. Okay. Oh, the word. Oh. 
So is the iron hot or not? I hope it's not hot. Oh, it's not hot. Okay. Uh, and. Whoa. Ah, help, help, help. I must stop that flying. It's very disconcerting. Okay, so. Um, I saw water boiling over in the pan on the cooker and the, I think what you were trying to say, and the iron was switched on. Because if you said, and the iron was switched off, that would be okay. The iron switched off is okay. Um, but you, you mentioned the water was boiling over in the pan and the iron was switched on. You left the iron on. I don't know, have any of you ever left the house and thought, did I turn the iron off? Tram, you must have done that. <laughs> yes, you have, April. <laughs> it's a horrible thought, isn't it? Did I switch off the gas? Did I turn off the iron? Oh no, the house is going to burn down. <laughs> so, um, Shiny, if you'd like to read your correction, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, turn off any source of heat or switch appliances off before leaving. I saw water boiling over in the pan on the cooker and the iron was switched on. Very good. Well done. Yes, very dangerous. No, you can't do that. <laughs> okay, back to April's text. Okay. And April's very worried about the kettle. So let's have a look at the text first. We need to do something with this kettle's cable too. Okay, yes, you can say with this kettle's cable, um, but how would you put it into the more correct form that you're more likely to see in a test? With the, this cable kettle? Mm. This cable kettle would mean a cable that's a kettle. Um, with the cable of the kettle. Okay, the cable's kettle's not wrong, but for things we tend not to use that um, apostrophe S possessive form. So we need to do something with the cable on the kettle too. Okay. And then it's too long and hanging almost, not till the floor, till it till tends to be about time, and hanging almost to the floor, to the floor. Okay, that's more about position. Okay, good. Now, <laughs> you're very worried about the cat. <laughs> That next sentence needs a little bit of work. Can you see what might be wrong? What could you stumble over? Street. Over the cable. Uh, yeah, to stumble is uh, to trip. It doesn't necessarily mean to actually hit the floor. It just means, you know, sometimes you stumble and you can write yourself. But yeah, Marco's got it. You have to say what you're going to stumble over. Stumble over what? Yeah, I might stumble over. But you've got to say what? Yeah. I might stumble if I'm in a hurry, but I might stumble over it if I'm in a hurry. Okay. So that it, it Sorry, refers to the cable, refers back to the cable. Marco, yeah? I'm not sure, but I think that you said uh, we need to do something with the cable of the kettle too, or on. Uh, you well, either wrote on. The cable of the kettle, that's uh, fine. Um, that's the possessive, the genitive. But the cable on the kettle, the cable that's attached to the kettle. OK, so one's a preposition, the other one's just the genitive form. OK, I'd, I'd prefer the cable on the kettle because I, I'd know specifically. Oh, yeah, that that needs that needs to be shortened. Or you can get those nice stretchy um, cables, can't you? They're much safer. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, is that okay, Marco? Yes, yes, thanks, Lynn. Okay, good. And then not only dangerous for the cat or the children, that cat, that darn cat, <laughs> but for you too, yes. So then you said, quite rightly, what can we do? Make it shorter or hang it a bit higher on the wall. Very good idea. Now, then you put on second thought. I'm sorry to say, we often say on second thoughts. Yeah, don't know why. Um, but on second thought, it's fine. Uh, you can have second thoughts too, though. Okay, so on second thought, the kettle is also too close to the hot hub. It might melt or even catch fire. Perfect. Maybe we can put the kettle um, on the left corner there. I wouldn't say on the left corner. Corner is a space. What preposition do we use if we're going for space rather than a surface? In. In, yeah. Put it in the corner. Go and stand in the corner, you naughty child. <laughs> Far from the hob. Very good. You, you could be a health and safety officer with this, April. We have sockets there, but we have to make the cable shorter, maybe by hanging it a bit higher on the wall. That's fine, because on the wall is a surface. Yeah. You could also hang it higher up the wall, as if it's higher up. Okay. It's too short to use a cable roller here, I think, but it's worth considering. I'm not sure what a cable roller is. <laughs> can you, uh, can you explain? Is... Yeah, Lind, um, for example, for the uh, phone ca cable um, in the past, uh, as an ex uh, as yeah an ex extended uh, cable phone, I used a kind of uh, not only for cable phone, also for the uh, electricity uh, electrical cable. Lind, you have such a roller. You you can roll the the cable. Uh, Sometimes, sometimes is it such a big one uh, where you can also uh, pull uh, to the garden, for example. But uh, for this kind oh, of like a garden hose. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Hose. One, yeah. I've never hose, seen one of those yeah. on a kettle. I have to admit. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't sure. It's like, what what kind of things do they have in her country? <laughs> I wondered if I might want one. Our, our kettle has actually got a springy cable. I don't know if you've ever seen it's like a rolled up cable and you can stretch it and then it can it sort of stretches, it expands and then it contracts when it's back on the um, uh, on the plug. Yeah? In fact, um, I'm telling a fib. That was our old kettle. Our new kettle is uh, cordless. So the cord to the um, the plate, the kettle plate, is quite short, uh, but the kettle can go anywhere because it's cordless. So uh, that's sorted that cable in our kitchen. OK, so let me give you your text to read, April. Oh, would you? Um, actually, April, sorry, I meant to ask your permission. Uh, could somebody else read your text? Yes, of course, of okay, course. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you. Traum, if you'd like to read the corrected text. Are you with us, Traum? Don't forget to unmute. Oh, maybe she's crashing. Traum. No. Okay, Marco, if you could read the text without the traum bit at the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Th thanks, April. I forgot. By the way, I just uh, I have read Lynn's explanation about about it, and I did. I I succeed to forget uh, about uh, idioms about uh, wires, <laughs> Lynn. But you uh, don't what you worry about us. it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even uh, remember any any idiom about wire from the previous time. Uh, I'll, type them, I'll type them up into the... 
<laughs> you will. No, the thing is, that's how memory works. When you're trying to remember it cold, you know, you've been told something. and you. But if you hear it again, then you'll remember it. Oh, yes, I know that one. Lynn told me it once. <laughs> okay. So, okay, if you'd like okay. to start reading, okay? Okay. On second thought, the kettle is also too close to the hot hub. It might melt or even catch fire. Maybe we can we can put the kettle in the left corner there, far from the hob. We have sockets there, but we have to make the cable shorter, made by hanging it a bit higher on the wall. It's too short to use a cable roller here, I think, but it's worth considering. Very good, well done. Hi, tough guy. Nice to see you. Okay, so um, just two yeah. things. Uh, Marco, you, you actually said it correctly the second time, but the first time your hob sounded like hub. Okay, so the kitchen hob, that's the top of the um, uh, oven, yeah? The hob. Top oven, yes. Yeah, the cooking appliance, or it can actually be just a hot plate. So if you think of the hob, hot plate, so ho, hob, but then hub. And a hub, I mean, that's probably from your computing. <laughs> uh, the hub can be part of a wheel, but we often talk about network hubs nowadays. The center of a network is the hub. OK. So hob, hub. Try it. Uh, hob, like the top of the oven and a hub, like uh, when, uh, when, when uh, using network. In networking. Yay, very good, very good. And then the next one, it's maybe by hanging. Okay, just because there's a by after the maybe, you can't ignore it. It's maybe by hanging. Try it. Uh, maybe by hanging. Yeah, I think it was like maybe, and then you saw the by and you thought maybe be, but no, it's maybe by hanging. Excellent. Well oh. done. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, um, just so you know, tough guy, we're looking at the text that Shiny and April wrote from last week's session. Okay, so it's a little bit of a recap and we are streaming this session as well. Okay, just so you know, this is a little bit of a, a practice run for me. <laughs> Seems to be working. I've no idea what's actually happening though, I'll be honest. <laughs> okay, so let's go on and we'll go back to Shiny's text okay so what you've put here is you might trip over and cause any injure and catastrophe such as fire okay now you can't cause injure you can injure somebody to injure but what is the noun of the verb to injure Any ideas, Shiny? So to injure is the verb. Injury. Yes, injury. injury. Yeah, injury. 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 So, and you wouldn't cause any injury. You might cause an injury. Yeah. So you could say you might trip over and injure yourself. Yeah. Or you might trip over and cause an injury. And then I wouldn't say and catastrophe, I'd say or a, cat a catastrophe. Again, articles, an injury, a catastrophe. There's a couple more missing. Get, get used to the articles. Do some practice with articles. Find some tests online, A and the, uh, and really try to get the idea that we, if there isn't an article in front of a noun, you have to think, am I right? Is this one that doesn't take an article or should there be an uh, an an, or a the there, okay? Um, so not such as fire, such as, what's missing? A uh, fire. Such as a fire. You might cause fire, mm, you might cause a fire. Don't start a fire. We didn't start the fire. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Oh, I better stop, otherwise YouTube might kill me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, Lean, then. but it could yep. could it be sorry mm -hmm. could it be uh, fire to be both also uh, 
accountable, accountable and uncountable. Yes, absolutely. Now, yeah, depends how big the fire and is. And really. a forest fire. Um, the forest is on fire, and there was, um, yeah, yeah. Could you say fire in the forest? Um, it can be uncountable. I'm trying. Let me think about it. I'll come back to you with an example of uncountable. <laughs> Or oh, fire! <laughs> okay. You can just talk about fire. If you're just talking about fire in general, then you'd say fire can burn. Okay. Fire as a general concept. Okay. Uh, it's like water. Water can drown you, but you can have a water as in a glass of water. A fire or fire in general okay okay so then again we've got electric cord hang in the counter mm, can it hang in the counter and what's missing from electric cord shiny uh is hung in the counter in okay in What's missing from electric cord though? In uh, an other. Um. An, yeah. Okay, so an electric cord is hanging down the side of the kitchen counter okay that's really really dangerous um, an electric cord is hanging down oh, sorry why not D? um because it's a general thing if you wanted to say the or the uh, then you say oh and look at the electric cord hanging down the counter okay Hanging down the side of the ca look at that it's so dangerous or in, in an electric cord if you wanted to again for using there you could say the the um, the cord of the kettle or the cord from the kettle is hanging down uh, the side of the counter and again we've got ironing board what do we need welcome back Traum what do we need uh, not ironing board Yes, an ironing board, yeah, or the ironing board, or there is an ironing board left in the room, yeah. So, an electric cord is hanging down the side of the kitchen counter, and there's an ironing board left in the room, okay. So, um, is it okay to get Traum to read your text, Shiny? Uh, yes, sure, please. Okay, so Traum, if you'd like to read that text, the corrected version. Okay, you might trip over and cause an, an injury or a catastrophe such, such as fire. An electric cord is hanging down the side of the kitchen counter and there is an ironing board left in the, in the room. Very good. Now, I'd just like to mention that the ironing board in itself, that might be a trip hazard, but it's not really the danger point. The iron on the ironing board is more of a danger of fire, really. Although you could trip over the... I have to be honest here, right now, in the office, believe it or not, the ironing board sitting yeah. there. <laughs> and suddenly it's turned into a surface for all hubby's stuff. Don't ask me why. I was doing some ironing and I was working. So like iron a shirt, do some work, iron a shirt, do some work. And the ironing board's still there. But suddenly there's a pair of headsets on it, a couple of CDs. <laughs> it's terrible. Every surface in our house gets covered in something eventually. So um, just one little word for you, uh, my little Austrian speaking friend. 
It's a catastrophe, not a catastrophe. Okay, a catastrophe. <laughs> Catastrophe. Okay, Catastrophe. That's a lovely little false friend. You see it. It's very similar to the German word. So the German pronunciation or Austrian pronunciation comes out. Just be, be careful. Catastrophe. Excellent. Very good. How are we doing for time? So let's go to the next bit uh, from April's. Now, you've put here, April, um, next, the detergent and cleaning materials are reachable for children. It's, you're kind of sort of trying to make it into a passive sentence and really should make it, when you're talking about a danger, it's much better to make it um, active. So I wouldn't say are reachable for children, but children could. Mm, approachable is more... I like to think I'm quite approachable on the forum. People can contact me if they need to. So approachable, no, not in that case. Um, to reach, yeah, to reach out and grab, um, that's fine. It's just the are reachable for children. I wouldn't put it in that sort of passive form. So if we start with children could, how would you end that sentence? Uh, next, children could reach the deterg detergent and cleaning materials yes, in the cupboard. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, children could reach, and that's very dangerous because, as we know, children will eat, swallow, put in their mouths anything that they can grab hold of. So, children could reach the detergent, nicely corrected, <laughs> and cleaning materials. Excellent. Now here, if you notice, you don't say the children or a child, uh, you just say children in general again, any children that live there. Um, so next, children could reach the detergent and cleaning materials. We should install a chalk, a, a lock. Yeah, we should install a lock. Very good. Quite a good point. And what kind of lock do we call it when it's on a cupboard and it's there to stop children getting into the cupboard? Can you remember? A child lock, but I'm. Uh, uh, the, you, do you know cabinet lock? I don't know if it is a, a, a good word, but uh, it is. You put it in inside, so in behind the the, the door. Mm -hmm. You install that behind the door, and if you want to open it, you have to uh, to push the uh, that thing down a little bit with your finger because it is only open for a small uh, a split, and then the, and then you can open that. So it is not with a key also. Yeah, I know what you mean. Oh, now yeah. we don't call those yeah? cabinet locks. We actually we actually call them child-proof locks okay ah, okay if you do a little google lock. search a child lock it sounds a little bit like um something that you lock a child <laughs> okay um so what we tend to say child safety lock okay or a child proof lock okay so rather than locking the child you're proofing it against the child <laughs> Okay, so child safety lock or child proof lock. Child lock, I think you'd end up with social services on your case. <laughs> but I think a cabinet lock would do. I mean, a, we'd, I wouldn't call it a cabinet lock, um, but I know what you mean. Um, you can get cabinet locks that are actually on the outside. Okay, but um, yes, you can get... Um, keyed locks, all sorts of different cylinder locks, deadbolt locks. But yeah, you could you could say that. It's not wrong. I think a cabinet lock would do. That's already difficult enough to open for me. Do you struggle with childproof locks, April? Yeah, it is it's not easy. And especially in the in the in the car, under the bonnet you have almost the same things that's a cabinet lock. I, I can't open that if I want to, to see my oil. <laughs> It's all right. They, they defeat me too. There's, um, you know, you can get gates, child gates, childproof gates for stairways. 
I don't know if you know that. You can get child. Ah, yeah, that yeah. is what I. I can't. Is, that is out. what I. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, I have I been known to climb over them. <laughs> you are not alone. Okay, so oh. and then, <laughs> then you mention every bottle should have the label of content to avoid blunders. What content is in the bottles? Uh, the detergents. Mm. Just the one? One content? Oh, content. Ingredients. Then, yeah, content, content is, uh, F. or ingredients. That's fine. Doesn't matter. It's the content. So you could have a content label. That would be okay. But a label of contents. Okay. Everybody, sh every bottle should have a label of contents to avoid blunders. Absolutely. And also, if you, I don't know, did any of you actually look at the bottles in your cupboards, at the cleaning products in your house? Did you have a look? Uh, look? Yeah, at the label. Do you mean at, yeah. at, at the content? What's uh, in it? Yes. What mi mixture yeah. is in it? That's right. What, oh, what chemicals yes. are in it? What chemicals are in them? And what warning labels that are? Quite often there'll be warning labels that will tell you what to do if you were to ingest, that is to um, eat or drink the contents and um, what, what contents there are that you should tell the doctor because quite often it just says go and see a doctor straight away. <laughs> oh, it's scary. Do it. Next time you buy something. Um, uh, even even the, the supposedly biological um, eco-friendly labels are enough to scare you because there's still acids and um, alkaline ingredients and they can they can all kill you. It's awful. Okay, so yeah, very and good. once once I uh, I uh, put bleak water in another uh, bottle, so without labels, without labels, uh, I think oh I will know that it is that it, that is bleak bleak water, but after a while I forget is it well uh, is it uh, bleak water or is it just a soap? When you say bleak, <laughs> so I bleak. What? Bleak, B bleak, bleak, bleak. Could you, could you type bleach. it up? Bleach, bleach. Ah, bleach. I thought. Bleach. Okay, bleak. Sorry. Bleak is like. Bleak. I mean, there might be bleak bleach. water out there, but bleach, <laughs> bleach. Yes, <laughs> bleak means bleach. gloomy. Yeah, like bleak house. Charles Dickens' <laughs> bleak house. Uh, but bleach. Yeah, no, bleach is. No, you should never leave something. I did that once as well. It was actually. Um, it was uh, anti flea spray for the dog and I did forget what was in it and um, then you don't know how the thing is you you wouldn't use it if you don't know what's in it but you also don't know how to dispose of it safely and you're like oh what was it is it flammable is it poisonous oh can I use that container again ended up I threw everything away <laughs> the container the um the, the liquid everything because I just could not remember and then two weeks later I thought oh no it was anti-flea spray <laughs> Okay, so um, here's the text, and Shiny, would you like to to read April's text? Yes. Next, children could reach the detergent and cleaning ma uh, materials. We should install a child-proof lock. I think a cabinet lock would do. That's already difficult enough to open for me, and every bottle should have a level of contents to avoid blunders. Very good, nicely read. Not level though, label, long A, a label of contents. A label of contents. Very good, well done, okay. So we'll go next to um, Shiny's text. See what she's got for us. And you've got exactly the same point. So um, you've, got, you've actually given us some advice, not that, just that it's dangerous. So put potentially dangerous stuff away or keep out of reach of children and pets. You're still worried about that cat, aren't you? <laughs> okay, so keep what out of 
the reach, again, the reach of children and pets. So if you just, um, if, you, if you're not sure, take the two, two halves of the sentence and see if, does that make sense? Keep out of reach of children and pets. It might make sense if it was the bottle and it's written in the imperative because it's whatever this is written on, keep out of reach of children and pets. But in a sentence, you need to say what? And you've already mentioned the potentially dangerous stuff away. So you refer to back to it using it. Keep it out of, um, keep it out of reach. That would be fine or keep it out of the reach of children and pets, okay? I love, I love your final sentence there, by the way, Shiny. Okay, so then you've gone a little bit again, articles, articles, articles. So matches is okay, because it's plural, so it doesn't need an article. You could say the matches, but you've got then on table. So matches on article the table. the table, that's it. I'm going to make you think about these things. <laughs> and then knife, singular, needs an article. Oh, I'm sure I'm flying again. Ooh. Okay, knife, singular, a knife. a knife, yeah. And then a uh, knife. The uh, age. Knife. On the age of the table. Yes, very good. So you see how often we use these articles. There's a knife on the edge of the table. That's really dangerous. Okay. So matches on the table and a knife on the edge of the table. Then iron on ironing board. Mm. What could you do with that sentence now? With your superpower of articles? An iron on an iron board. Iron mean board. Yeah, the iron or an iron on the ironing board. I would say that's more dangerous than the ironing board, absolutely. And simply just don't leave your children or pets alone in the kitchen. <laughs> Excellent advice. So, um, tough guy, would you like to read the text? Yes. Okay, yes. let me type it up for you, um, the corrected version. There you go. Thirdly, uh, yeah, I put the question in. Yeah, can you wait till tough guy's read it? Yes. And then yes. I'll, I'll answer, yeah. okay? Okay, matches on the table, a knife on the edge of the table, an iron on the ironing board. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? Ironing board, the ironing board. Okay, it's ironing board. Very good. And then the last bit. And say this as if you're really giving somebody strict advice, okay? Okay, simply just don't leave your children or pets alone in the kitchen. Very good, very good, yes. Just don't do it. <laughs> Excellent advice. Okay, uh, Traum, take the mic. Uh, it's about the first sentence i think it's uh, your text shiny am i right um a knife on the edge of the table does it mean the sharp side or the uh, the top the tip of the of the knife is uh, pointing up is, is this meant no no it on just the means edge? no um on the edge means if you look at the picture okay yes. there you've got the uh -huh. knife the bread knife uh -huh. But the handle of the bread knife is hanging over the edge of the table. So a child could reach it and grab hold. You might see it, not realize it was a knife, grab it. And then you've got oh, yeah. a child impaled. So it's nothing to do with the blade. It's just to do with the knife itself. The edge of the table is literally where the table ends. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. exactly. It's Thanks. the position yeah. of the knife, Marco. Yes, spot on. 
Okay. Sorry, Lynn, but but is it uh, uh, you used uh, an ion on the ironing board? But is it because Shiny previously in her text mentioned ion? Uh, does it mean like uh, that now it becomes the ion instead of an ion? Uh, well, if you notice, yeah. um, in her previous part of her text, she, she didn't mention uh, the iron itself. She mentioned the ironing board. She said ironing board, an ironing board left in the room. Okay. And so um, then referring back to the ironing board, it becomes an iron on the ironing board. There's not just an ironing oh. board in the room. There's an iron on the ironing board. So normally when you're referring back to some the it's because you've mentioned it before and it it's because you've mentioned it before okay there's an ironing board in the room and on the ironing board that i just mentioned there's an iron okay shall i type that oh, okay, for you okay, okay. there's Thank i know you. it's oh hang on <laughs> there well, i can't <laughs> type today i'm just straighten myself up there there's an ironing board in the room and on the ironing board, there's an iron, okay? Does that make sense? So the the, the non-specific, remember it's a and an, a non-specific and the is specific. The non-specific ironing board suddenly becomes specific because you've already mentioned it, okay? You could also say okay, you could also say and there's an iron on it. So there it is referring back to the ironing board that you've previously mentioned. Does that help, Marco, or does that confuse you even more? Y yes, yes, great. No, 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 great. I, I, I got it because I, I thought that Shiny mentioned uh, before, uh, mentioned about it before, but actually, she didn't. Uh, she has just mentioned about uh, about uh, the iron uh, about the ironing board, not about uh, an uh, iron. Okay, good. She didn't. But about the room right now, is that uh, because <laughs> a room, uh, you used the room, article the in front of room? Well, because it's the room we're looking at in the picture. I mean, you could say that about all the oh. items here, but um, when, when, the, when, when they were writing the text, it was more a more general in the room, in the room I was looking at, okay? In the room, there was an ironing board. So suddenly the room becomes specific because you're talking about the stuff in it, okay? If, if it was a mystery, yeah, there was an ironing board in a room. <laughs> Under the ironing board, there was a body. <laughs> we'll do another murder mystery at some point in the future. <laughs> okay, now... Um, just to finish up, I'm going to look at very quickly because we're running, we're, we've run out of time, but as you know, um, <laughs> we never finish on time. What's time anyway? Um, April, you wrote next, please be careful with the iron cable. Now that would be a very heavy cable. Why? Ah, oh, sorry. The, the ca cable of the iron. Cable of the <laughs> iron, yes. <laughs> People would know what you meant by the iron cable, but somebody sarcastic like my husband would go, my goodness, that must be heavy. <laughs> okay, place that in a special hook for ironing board. You've got Shiny's preposition disease, um, article disease. Place that in a special hook for... An ironing board? Oh, the ironing board. You've mentioned it already. Oh, the yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, I'd say place that in the special hook on the ironing board. Have you got one, by the way? Um, no. Oh, I have. I have. It's a <laughs> swinging like I'll to take have a photo. That. No, it's really? great. It swings oh. around. <laughs> it's like a flexible hook. Keeps oh, it really? off the ground. Yeah, it's brilliant. I'll take a photo of my ironing board for you all. <laughs> and don't put the iron too close to the edge of the board. Very good. 
and then it will be it will fall before you know it will fall before you know what before you know it that's it no? you know it you know it already <laughs> Me too. And I never try to leave the iron sitting that way when I finished. Well, especially if you have children or pets. Pets can knock them over and children might grab hold of the iron. The things that you interact with a lot in the house tends to have a fascination for children, I think. And they think, oh, I want to do that. So, yeah, put them away uh, or close them in the room so the children can't get at them. And um, hopefully, eventually, when they're old enough, they can do the ironing themselves. <laughs> Yes, yes, I'm waiting. I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I bet. <laughs> okay, so um, I think April, it's your turn to read and it's your text. So, oh, no, no, is it Shiny's turn to read yours? You read Shiny's, didn't you, April? So, Shiny, would you? No, read no, no, no. No, oh, no, 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 okay. no, the other side. The other side, right? <laughs> I should keep a <laughs> note the... of these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the rest of the text, Lynn, is it all right then? Uh, I will correct that, but we're running out of time, so I'll correct that. Oh, okay. And we'll move on next week, okay? okay so watch out for my correction, okay? <laughs> next, please be careful with the cable of the iron. Place that in a special ho hook for the, for the ironing board. And don't put the iron too close to the edge of the board. It will fall before you know it. Very good, uh, yeah. Okay. Very good, yeah. And so again, the edge of the board, that's where that black line is on the on the ironing board, that's its edge. So don't put it too, I would say that iron is a bit close to the edge. In fact, you should put the iron on the iron stand. There is normally on an ironing board, there's an iron stand where you can place the iron and it's more secure. So really you shouldn't leave, um, the iron close to the edge or uh, just sitting on the board itself. Okay, so any questions? Marco, yes, you should definitely give them awesome votes. They were totally awesome. Absolutely brilliant. Well done. The homework was a difficult one, I would, I would say. Yes, because it makes you come back in world and look at the picture again. <laughs> But no, I was hoping it would just make you think about, oh yeah, what else is dangerous here? Okay, but I'll share the link to the picture um, in the forum because this is from the Nationwide account. Um, and why Nationwide have put these pictures online, I don't know, but I'm very grateful they did. Uh, and next week we'll move into some other um, hazardous areas. Um, I do have a question, one question though, because April mentioned it in her post. Um, do we have a smoke alarm and a fire blanket here? <laughs> have you all got smoke alarms? Yes, I have. Good. Glad to hear it. Shiny, do you have a smoke alarm in your in your home? Yes. It, yeah. Yes, actually, it's uh, obliged obli 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 to. I mean, everyone have to. Everyone has to uh, set this in their household. Really? So it's law? It's it's a require a legal requirement yes. now? Good. It's a good idea. Yes. Traum, do you have any fire alarms? Or smoke alarms? Sorry, I muted. I was... I had it muted. Uh, no, it's not so common, common here. Uh, and the law doesn't say we must have it. But some, maybe my, my new neighbor, my, my very rich neighbor, <laughs> has of course each in each room, yes, in each room, um, a, a smoke alarm. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, a smoke alarm and of course uh, an alarm for in case uh, robbers would get in, into the house. A burglar alarm. The, the, a, a burglar alarm, yes. But we don't and so my neighbors. Um, it's not so common. I mean, it's very important in restaurants and for old houses, I think. Actually, I, I really do believe, I've been in two fires in my life and I do believe in them. We have, you don't have to have one in every room, but we have one um, by the front door, we have one at the bottom of the stairs and we have one at the top of the stairs. Um, and it's a fire and carbon monoxide 
alarm because we have gas, of course, and um, it's actually not that expensive, to be honest, Hermina. So I don't think, I mean, a burglar alarm tends to be expensive, yes, but these smoke alarms, you can buy them at a DIY store for a few euros. So, and if it's the only thing you have to do is remember to change the battery once a year and it might save your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, it's, it's in, when you have any experience about fire, then I would also be aware, I, I'm sure. Mm. But I, I should uh, speak, uh, I would have, a, I should have a word with my husband about this matter. Absolutely. Or just do it yourself. <laughs> And yes. see if he notices. Why not? It is a smoke detector, though. It is a smoke detector, not a smoke detect. It detects smoke, but it's a smoke detector, shiny. Okay. And you can, you can, you can, of course, get really expensive ones now that are completely linked into the internet and will send you messages on your mobile phone. But you can also buy very simple ones that just run off batteries. You just unpeel a yes. label, stick it on the ceiling, and you're good to go. <laughs> Does it, does it release water? Lynn? No, 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 no. It's just it just um, sounds an alarm if it detects smoke or bacon. I used to call mine the bacon alarm April when it was in the kitchen. That's why it's not in the kitchen anymore. <laughs> and, and, the, the, and the alarm is it delivered to the to the fire brigade? No, or to the police? it just or, or just, just wakes you up. It's just a very high pitched, very loud. Uh, will wake awesome. you up if there's yeah the, that's the simpler ones yes of course you can get one that's integrated and will call out the emergency services the army <laughs> the navy the air okay. force if you can afford it <laughs> okay. oh yes no, no the nice ones i've got shot. just wake us up if if the alarm goes off <laughs> yard and so on <laughs> okay, so um, I hope you enjoyed the session and uh, we'll see you hopefully next week. Um, but as I say, look out for your corrections in the forum and we'll, um, if you have any questions, why can't I say that, then uh, just ask, of course. And Shiny's put up a couple of um, videos as well. And uh, I love the Mr. Bean one. <laughs> we love Mr. Bean, don't we? You're welcome. I'll let you know if the streaming worked as well. Okay. Thank you for your patience, getting everything set up. And uh, we'll uh, carry on with a little bit more of this safety, but in a different room next week. It's dangerous, isn't it, life? <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming. Bye. Take care. And that was a session in Kitely for the Learning Dish Network.